Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Rebecca and I'm the event planner of the Microsoft Reactor New York. Um, before we begin, we recommend checking in to receive session resources. There are a lot of um, learn modules on the check-in page. We have a GitHub repo on the check-in page. Definitely check in, get those resources. It's all neatly on this one web page, so check it out. The website is aka.ms slash reactor check-in, and the event ID is 15000. I dropped that into the chat as well, and I'll have it up on the screen again in a little bit. So quickly, just to cover our code of conduct, Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and our presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but we just ask that you're mindful of your commentary, you remain professional and on topic. Our event guidelines, this session is recorded. It is live right now on YouTube and will be available later on on demand. Um, if you have questions, feel free feel free to submit them into the chat. If you have not yet participated on a YouTube live stream, you do need to be signed in with an account to interact there. So if you haven't done so yet, you can do that now. Or you know, if you have questions you're not able to send us right now, you can always message us later. So today is a session. Let's bring up Jay. Hey there. Thanks Welcome. a lot. I appreciate it, Rebecca. How, how are you today? I'm great. I'm great. So this is Jay Gordon. He's a cloud advocate here at Microsoft Reactor. Um, he'll be walking us through how to deploy bicep files using GitHub Actions. So that's exciting. Uh, it looks like we've got a few people in the room already. Again, if you haven't checked in yet, oh, welcome from Berlin. We've got Philip joining us. Hello. Welcome, Philip. Hi, Philip. Yeah, anybody in the chat, feel free to let us know where you're joining from, what your experience level is, what you're hoping to gain from this session. Uh, or, you know, I know Jay from previous sessions, he's a big fan of the Yankees, right? <laughs> so if you want to talk about that too, we're, we're here for it. <laughs> Absolutely. So why don't we jump into my slides and we'll kind of get started here. I think that we've got some cool stuff to talk about. Um, it's going to be a pretty fast paced session. Um, I, I hope you're prepared. I've got a whole lot for you. My name, like Rebecca said, is Jay Gordon. I'm a cloud advocate. Um, I, uh, I do a lot around uh, IT operations, infrastructure, um, things that help people get into and using the cloud. And so I really do appreciate you taking part. And if you want to send me any response, uh, any information if you have questions my twitter is always the best way to get in touch with me um after this session i i, I welcome you to follow me and uh interact and i am uh also uh always doing azure fun bites it's every thursday at 2 p.m on learn tv uh I'll, I'll get you more information about that if you check out my twitter um so let's talk about our agenda really quickly uh, we're going to be reviewing uh, the components of this workshop. We'll configure the dependencies. We'll secure our uh, credentials with Key Vault. And then we're going to deploy our application to Azure Kubernetes Service. All right. And we'll get into all those different components as we continue along. So if you're going to follow along, you're going to need a few things to get your prerequisites in. You're going to need an SSH public key. Um, if you don't know how to do that, it's in the docs. We'll be able to show you how to do that once we get to those docs. Um, you can use the template repo so you can run GitHub Actions. It should be in your own account. You can't use the public template to run GitHub Actions. You need to have it a part of your user. Um, an Azure account, you know, we're going to be building something for Azure. So an Azure account really helps. $200 of free credit. We'll get to that link in a second. And then you're going to want to clone your um, your your uh, repository in either uh, Cloud Shell or, or locally. I'm going to be using uh, a Visual Studio Code today. So if you want to sign up for Azure, 
keep this up for a second. You can go to aka.ms slash CDA free Azure, 12 months of free services, 25 other free services that always, and $200 in free credit. Um, if you want to follow along and actually do this workshop yourself, um, you can also just watch this video and follow along uh, after the fact. Uh, you can go to aka.ms slash DevOps slash AKS bicep. Um, or just github.com slash jdestro slash AKS bicep. Um, and you can go ahead and just use the template and you don't need to fork it. You just want to use the template and what it'll do is create an entire version for you uh, that copies exactly what I have into your own personal repository. And so we're going to be building today a demo app. The demo app is going to be just a simple um, .NET application that's using, I believe, uh, JavaScript for the front end. And uh, it's also using Redis to store uh, our votes, which is either cats or dogs. I'm voting dogs. Um, so let's answer a few questions before we actually start building things. Sound good? All right. So let's do this. Cool. So first question is, what is Bicep? Well, we can start out with an intro on what it is, which is a domain specific language for deploying Azure resources declaratively. So you could think of it as the next generation of ARM templates, which if you work with in the past, you know that they came with a burden of working with JSON. So BICEP has a simpler syntax compared um, and it's aimed at simplifying the authoring experience. So a good analogy to understand the relationship between bicep and arm would be uh, similar to the relationship between TypeScript and JavaScript. Uh, TypeScript is like bicep, JavaScript is like arm. And bicep transpiles down to a standard uh, arm template into JSON, which means that the arm JSON is effectively being treated as an intermediate language. And all the work is being done uh, in open source on GitHub, and you can keep uh, view of it. It's been like that since day one of how the product is evolving. So uh, Bicep has a very readable, uh, writable syntax. It's similar to ARM templates and Terraform. Bicep is a declarative language where you say what you want and Azure makes it so. So opposed to imperative approaches such as using Azure CLI or PowerShell that require you to tell Azure how to do things procedurally. With BICEP, you don't need to worry about the complexities of how. With modules, you can break up your BICEP code into manageable chunks. Um, BICEP has a first-class authoring experience. Uh, it has rich type safety, validation, IntelliSense, uh, a bunch of features. There's a really great Visual Studio Code uh, extension. It really makes it a lot easier to start authoring your templates. And Bicep also offers a decompile command so you can take your ARM template and convert it to Bicep. Um, there's a, uh, a bunch of tools that you can use, including a, uh, a Bicep playground that will let you actually transpile uh, your, your ARM templates directly into Bicep. So why use it? Um, day zero support for all the different Azure resource types and API versions. Um, let's continue along. Uh, no state files, which means you don't have to actually store a state file in something like um, Azure storage or keep it locally as part of a repository. Um, Pre-fight validation so you can fail fast so you know where your problems are first and foremost before actually using it and deploying it. Um, the VS Code extension uh, is part of the tooling along with uh, it being directly into Azure CLI. You can use Azure PowerShell. And like I said, there's this uh, Bicep Playground where you can get different types of Bicep templates. Um, Marcus was kind enough to uh, put a blog together, Marcus Felling. Um, if you go to that blog post on the bottom, you can see why you would maybe want to use uh, Bicep over Terraform. All right. So let's keep going along. So what's GitHub Actions? We covered what Bicep was, but uh, GitHub Actions is first and foremost, it's first class CI CD. Uh, it's an automation tool for any software workflow related to your repo. Um, we've been using it for CI CD, but that's only one way. You could run a workflow when someone comments on an issue or when you're, someone forks your repo, you'll get, um, 
actions kicked off. Um, but it's really good at CI, CD, and it can deploy almost anywhere. So a workflow is a configurable automated process made up of one or more jobs. You must create a YAML file to define your workflow configuration. GitHub Actions is available with GitHub Free, GitHub Pro, GitHub Free for Organizations, GitHub Team, GitHub Enterprise Cloud, GitHub Enterprise Server, and GitHub AE. So there, there's lots and lots of places that you can actually use it. Um, you can create runners for your build process. Uh, you can use it native to Windows, Linux, Mac. So you have all these different cross-platform uh, ways to actually deploy. Uh, or I should say do builds, public repos are free, private repos include 2,000 free minutes, uh, and there are more than 2,000 if you, you need to use that more uh, in build time, um, you, you need to use the paid offering. And then self-hosted runners uh, for Windows, Linux, Mac uh, are capable, so you install an agent on your uh, build environment, uh, if you have a specific build environment or you're worried about security or something like that, uh, and you can set that up. And so the next part is Key Vault, which is where we're going to be storing our secrets. Um, so we have a multitude of places uh, in the world of you know software development where you can store secrets, and the list is pretty exhaustive. But... Um, there's a few common places that we can keep them. And right now we can use GitHub secrets, which we were going to be using in just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna be using these different application platform potential, uh, potentially to store our secrets like app settings and Azure app service or secrets and AKS. Um, and then centralized key store, which is what we're gonna be using today in Azure Key Vault. So it's a centralized place to actually uh, store your secrets and certificates. And so why should we use it? Uh, in addition to being a central location to store our secrets, Key Vault layers on additional benefits to managing our secrets. Fine grade access control, network access control. Um, we can limit exactly where we actually can get those secrets and where they can go. So uh, we've got a lot of different options to be able to keep your access control, backups, logging, secret rotation uh, of your secrets, keep them secure, keep them easy to access. And then finally, uh, a part of our intro, uh, we're, we're going to get into our, our actual demo in just a few minutes, uh, is Azure Kubernetes service. And so what is it? It's a serverless Kubernetes experience. Uh, it's Integrated continuous integration and uh, continuous delivery is possible. Uh, it provides you enterprise grade security and governance. You can guide your development and operations teams on a single platform to rapidly build, deliver, and scale applications with confidence. So, if you think about it, this if um, ARM or Azure Resource Manager is the control plane uh, for all of Azure, AKS can be a control plane for your uh, Kubernetes. Con configurations. And so you'll use this to build, manage Kubernetes clusters. Uh, you can orchestrate any type of workload running in the environment of your choice, whether you want to move .NET applications to Windows Server containers, modernize Java, Java applications in Linux containers, or run microservices um, in the public cloud, at the edge, in hybrid environments. Uh, you can even use your own data center if you're using AKS on Azure Stack HCI. So there's so many different solutions for you to run your uh, your orchestrated containers with Kubernetes. So why don't we get to work? We'll follow along, um, at, go in the chat, ask questions if you need them. Um, this will be recorded, so you can also just follow along at a, a later date. So uh, I, I've got my, my screen up, and uh, what we're going to do is work together. Let me put myself right down here in the corner. Uh, what we're going to be doing is using uh, this, this template that I've come up with, uh, AKS Bicep, that's got all the instructions on the left side, uh, you can see here. So we're able to uh, use all the different instructions that we need to be able to actually build this, uh, this demo and deploy it on our own, um, if you'd like to. So 
if you're here in the AKS bicep repo, you're going to just click use this template. And then it'll give you the ability to copy the template into your account with your own repository name. I've already done that. And here we go. This is where my actions will run. Uh, you can see I've already got a failed action because uh, the, the code is still generic uh, set up. And, and so let, let's move ahead. Um, as we said before, we need to have an SSH public key in order to actually do anything here. So to create a key, I've got an example right here, SSH key gen. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, um, I, I really recommend taking a look on, you can use a popular search and look up SSH public key generation. Uh, but that command will get you one really quickly. Uh, the next thing you need to do is you're gonna need to uh, clone this repository. And so I'm just gonna go here to code, local. I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to clone repo here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in VS Code. Just going to say elect repo location. OK, and we'll open it up. And now we've got our repo. And you can see in here, uh, I've got a git ignore file. And the big reason why I've created that git ignore file is I like to set up a scratch file. Um, that I'm not going to save. And I also am going to be saving some credentials locally, and I don't necessarily want them to get checked in. So I've got a git ignore file. I've got my bicep template. Um, I've got a parameters file that's going to be modified. Um, and then I've got my GitHub deployment uh, it, for my GitHub Actions workflow. So we'll go through those uh, as we progress through the session. Uh, so we uh, need to get our subscription ID and set it as a variable. And to do that, uh, you can just run this command in our terminal. So subscription equals az account show query ID. Uh, and what it does is it actually drops our subscription into a variable. So if I just go echo subscription, you can see there's my subscription ID. Then what we need to do is uh, set up some uh, in shell environment variables for our location and the name uh, that we're going to be using for our resource group, our cluster, and our key vault. Um, I've simplified this where we're just using one name because naming things are difficult. So we're just going to name, we're going to use the location of East US. We're going to use the name AKS Bicep 02, which is what I named my template repository uh, that I, I've stored locally. So all I have to do is paste in these two different environment variables into my shell. Um, if you're using PowerShell, obviously, this is going to be a little bit different of a process. Uh, so now I've got my environment variables for location and the name. The name should be unique uh, if you need to just use some random name and numbers, whatever it is, um, just store it as a variable. So the next thing we're going to do is create the resource group in our shell. And a resource group is where all of our resources are. Pretty simple. Uh, that's where we keep everything within a Azure uh, deployment. Uh, everything is in specific resource groups, and it's kind of like a carton of eggs. You can uh, take eggs out. You can put eggs back in. And if you don't like your dozen of eggs, you can throw the whole thing out. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use those environment variables to create um, our resource group. So there you can see uh, this is where our resource group is. It's underneath my, uh, my subscription. And you can see here, there it is. So this is all from the API. It puts it everything in JSON. And so once we finish that, we need to create a service principle. And the service principle are credentials uh, that allow you to log into your Azure account uh, when running GitHub Actions. And so what I'm going to do is I have already kind of set it up here. So we have our name environment variable, our contributor uh, role. Let me bring this up so it's a little bit bigger so you can see. Um, so what we're doing is we're running an Azure CLI command. And then uh, we're, we're specifying the scope uh, for that specific resource group and uh, the, 
we're uh, saving that uh, is a service principle dot text file. So it's just saving it locally. And that's the big reason why we have it here in our git ignore so we can't check it in. So uh, what it's going to do is it's going to save my uh, credentials for this uh, service principle in that text file. Here it is. Um, this is in JSON format. It contains a client ID, a secret, a subscription ID, um, all this. We, we, we need this in order to actually uh, connect uh, our, our GitHub repository to our, our, our Azure account. So what I want to do now is I need to create a few uh, GitHub action secrets environment variables. So I'm just going to copy this to put it in another window so that you can kind of follow along to what I'm doing. And so where I have to go next in order to create these environment variables is here on the side with the triple dots. We'll go to settings for the repository. And if you scroll down, you can see here there's secrets. Let me take it all blown up so you can see secrets right there. And uh, action secrets are environment variables that are encrypted. Uh, so you don't have to worry about clear text being passed along with uh, your credentials for your Azure account. Uh, we don't want that. So we're going to create three different um, secrets that we need here. So what we're going to be doing is storing our Azure credentials. So I'm just going to go here in my action secret section and click new repository. Uh, I should say new secret for the repo. I'm going to name it Azure credentials. And then what I'll do is I'll just grab these entire credentials that we got that we got from uh, our Azure CLI command that created uh, our, our service principle. And I'm going to just dump them all right here. So the entire piece of JSON, I'm going to throw right in here and then click add secret at the bottom. So that's our first one. Then we need our Azure resource group. That's the resource group that we created. Uh, so we're going to just create new repository secret. Uh, and we're going to just call it AKS bicep 2 We'll add that secret. Cool. And then our third one is our Azure subscription. And so uh, that's the subscription ID that we looked at before. Um, all we have to do actually is go back to our, uh, our our creation, you can see here is of our resource group, and you can see that our subscription ID is there, but it's also stored as an environment variable. So if you need it, you can just go echo subscription. Type, if you're on a Mac, type it in the PB copy. So let's bring back up this. Here we go. And so our final. Uh, action secret that we need. So now that creates uh, a service principle trust uh, between my GitHub account and my, uh, my Azure account. So now my GitHub actions are allowed to log into Azure and create resources. All right. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section. Um, I'll see if I can get to them. We're going to keep moving along. So we, we've taken care of these first parts. We've, we've created our, our resource group. We've created our secrets. And the next thing we need to do is create a key vault. Now, what I've done here is I've provided you with a CLI command that allows you to use AZ key vault create. And what it's going to do is it's going to give it a name. And then that name is that AKS bicep 2 variable, the resource group, same name variable, the location of where our key vault is going to be is in East US. Um, you can set it to what particular uh, region you need, especially if you have some specific governance on where uh, data has to be stored for your apps. There's so many different uh, places and regions for you to do that. Um, we can say, uh, here's some options that we can add. So we can say that we can access our key vault uh, for template deployments. Uh, for disk encryption and for uh, deployment uh, to virtual machines. So you can do it that way, or you can uh, use the portal and the portal gives you a next, next, last way of creating it. 
Uh, I've already created this because it takes a few minutes to create a, um, a key vault. Um, and you can see I've got it online here. And what I need to do in here is to store some secrets. I, I need some secrets that we're going to be able to uh, grab from the parameters file. And from that parameters file, uh, specify that we're going to access this SSH RSA public key, the one I told you about. And that actually allows you to uh, have SSH access to the underlying Kubernetes cluster of virtual machines. So if you're doing some troubleshooting, you'll be able to still get in. Uh, your service principal client ID, and that is right here. And then the service principal client secret. So it's kind of like a username and password. We don't want to send those over the, the wire in the parameter file. We'd rather store it here in our uh, key vault. So we need to create these three. and it's just a matter of a couple of commands. So let, let's go through that. So the first section we need to do here in our key vault is go to secrets because we're not gonna be storing keys or certificates. We're gonna be storing secrets and we can click generate import. And uh, what we're going to be doing is giving it a name. And so based on our documentation, the first one for our SSH public key is this name. So what we're going to be doing is creating the secret name as SSH RSA public key. Now we need to actually enter the secret. And the easiest way for me to do that is I can just go in here to my uh, terminal. I'm gonna cat uh, my SSH key. So I keep it in dot SSH uh, ID RSA dot pub. And then what I can do is just cat it or I should say pipe it into PB copy as well. I mean, you can also just copy and paste it directly. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is taking this value and just putting it right here. And you can also see that you can look at the value you store, just double check. And we can set activation dates and expiration dates if we need to have this key rotated every so often. Um, and then we just click create and that secret is created. Um, I don't want to save this, no. Uh, next, we'll go to generate import because we need to get to our next secret. That's our service principal client ID. And so we'll go back here, same process, service principal client ID. We'll go here to the SP text file and just grab our client ID. The reason I'm showing you all this way, we're doing it manually, is that normally you would have to use multiple bicep modules in order to be able to create your key vault and store your secrets. I wanted to show you kind of like piece by piece how it all fits together. So create, I've got my uh, my second uh, diff, uh, secret that I've stored, and now I need to just add my last one. And our last one is our service principal client secret. So. Uh, we put in our username with the client ID, and now we're going to put in our password. And uh, we're going to go ahead, and and this is so we can set up a uh, a trust for our actual AKS cluster. So our service principal uh, principal client secret that is what this is called, and then we can go to client secret, copy that, and for the value, click create. So now we have our three secrets. Cool. And if we go back here to our overview, we can see that we actually have a URI that we can access if we need to programmatically access these secrets and then display them somewhere. Um, that, that That's basically how it's able to create. And you can retrieve secrets using a Azure CLI. You can use it uh, using the various SDKs and, and you can set up different access policies, networking, uh, identity management, all the different things that you expect to be able to do with your Azure account uh, for these different resources that you create. You'll, you're able to do right here in the Key Vault portal. Uh, so we, we've got our credentials stored as secrets. And now what we need to do is to update the parameters file. And we just want to give it the name of our resource group. And so our parameters file is located right here in the root of our repository directory. And what we're going to do is take a look. I think I took that out actually. 
So we, we've got some names that we want to use here. We have a unique cluster name and DNS prefix. Um, I have actually taken that out. I have to update the doc. Uh, I've taken that whole thing out just to simplify it. Um, and it's automatically just utilizing uh, that from the AKS template. And we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, so what we're going to be doing now is updating where exactly. So I have these three parameters that we just created secrets for. And you can see right here, um, SSH RSA public key, uh, we're referencing a particular key vault that we created. And so all we need to do is take this section right here. And we're just going to update some of these parameters. And uh, we can just go to edit, replace. And what we're going to do is copy that, paste it in here. Uh, so we're going to update our vault's name, which is AKS Bicep. 2 our subscription ID, which we got from before, right here. And um, our, our actual uh, resource group, we actually need to add in here, and that will be AKS Bicep. Two, so we'll replace these three, uh, and and you can see, oops, got an extra slash. Let's just get rid of these here. So we've got our subscription set, and we've pointed it to the specific uh, resource that we've created for our key vault, and within that key vault, we're specifying these secret names. So why did we need to do that? Well, simply stated that if you go into this AKS bicep template, you can see that there are a number of parameters that get set. So DNS prefix, like I said, it's just going to use the resource group name. And you can see how it's it's just declarative. It's, it's, it's allowing you to just add these parameters, uh, provide strings for them. Um, you can add descriptions so you can actually know what they are. Um, and, and we've got all these different values so we can specify uh, what the size of the disk is. So we could we can add all these different uh, parameters into our parameter file uh, so we don't have to manually hard code them into this uh, bicep template. But I've taken care of just some three key things. And so uh, we've got our unique cluster name parameter. Uh, we've got our Linux profile username. And then now we have here um, our public key that's stored as a secret. So that's, we go back to our secret section. That's why we created these three. That's why we have our client secret because we need to access it here. And this parameter specifically references exactly where it is. All right. Looks like I overcooked this parameters file and I'm going to fix it really quick. Let's see. Yeah, I did. it. All right. Uh, give me one second. Let me back up and fix this. Sorry about that. You know, when you do it live, sometimes you make mistakes. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll do replace again. So go to edit, replace, Pop that in, pop that in here. Um, vault name, it's AKS Bicep02. Subscription ID, we got before. So let's go ahead and just grab that. And then we just update the last parameter, which is our resource group. And that's the same here. Sorry, it's not a little easier, but I have made this more difficult for myself for some reason. Uh, and it's always fun when you're doing it live and you are making it more difficult.
So, oop. all right, O2. There. All right, so our key vaults are updated. Subscription, the resource group, the provider, the actual uh, key vault API that we're accessing, and the name of the key vault. All right, so that's all set. We've got our three parameters uh, specified that uh, for our SSH public key, our service principal client ID, and our secret name. So I've saved it, okay? So I've saved this file. You can see it's in my uh, actual um, source control. And for the person that's asking the question, what's a BICEP file? BICEP file is a template for uh, authoring Azure resources. So you can uh, basically declaratively state what uh, you want created, how you want it created, uh, where you want it created, and uh, it, it's a domain-specific language for Azure Resource Manager. So we've got to the point where we've made all of our changes, um, and then we're going to take a look at the action file. So we, we've set up our application to be able to start deploying what it is we need. And, and I'm sorry I'm moving so fast, but we only have a little bit of time left. Um, I've got this YAML file that's our GitHub workflow that when we have a push to our repository, we're going to, first of all, reference our resource group, uh, or I should say our repository GitHub Action Secrets. So that's just showing this variable right here. We need the cluster name, which is Azure RG, the resource group, Azure RG, that's the name variable we created before. The namespace, that's where the namespace within Kubernetes we're going to be saving uh, and creating our application. And then the app name of the specific application that we're building. And so what we can do is uh, look at our runner and our job is going to uh, build and deploy everything on Ubuntu. Uh, we're going to check out our code. In this case, we're not checking out any code. Uh, we're logging into Azure. So that's why we saved our credentials. Uh, we're deploying our BICEP file and we'll take a look. We've got our template right here, AKS BICEP, and then the parameters, Azure deploy.parameters.json, where we modified our parameters before. Uh, then what it'll do is it'll set the target for our Azure Kubernetes. And so it'll use our credentials, it'll give our cluster a name, and it'll use our resource group and spe specify what I'm changing is going to be done within this particular Kubernetes cluster. Then we're going to create the namespace um, where we keep everything. And then eventually we're going to deploy our app to AKS. And our uh, our deployment is actually uh, just in this manifest file. So this is a standard manifest for Kubernetes in de our deployment. You can see it's going to give all the information. So the name of our app, uh, the front end, the back end, the node selector, um, and then uh, the container itself. So the container image that we're going to be deploying. If you were creating your own AKS uh, and ACR, Azure Container Registry uh, combination, you would specify uh, where your ACR is located. In this case, we're just gonna be using these base images. All right, so let's go ahead and, and get to the part where we start deploying. So I've got the changes here to the Azure deploy file in our source control. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it. And we're gonna be just staging this and then we're gonna just commit to the main branch. Uh, if you were working in a team, you probably wouldn't wanna directly commit to main branch. You might wanna have a separate branch to do so, but we're doing a demo today and we're gonna to try to move along fast. So we're gonna be saving a commit message and we're gonna say deploy to AKS. All right, and then we'll sync our changes. So what that's going to do here on the GitHub side, is we'll go up to GitHub Actions. Pushing that is going to kick off a GitHub Actions workflow. And you can see right now we've got deploy to AKS. And so what's gonna happen now is we're gonna go through a build and deploy process that we specified in our workflow file. 
So it's going to set up our job. It's going to be running checkout main. So it's going to grab the image, the repository and any code that we need. Then it's going to get to that next section where it actually logs into Azure and then specifies the environment. So the cluster name, the resource group, the namespace for Kubernetes, the application name in Kubernetes, uh, and the provider, which is Azure R. And then what we get to the point is we're doing the deploy. And so you can see here, uh, GitHub Actions looks at that workflow file and says, I'm supposed to kick off a build from this template using these parameters with this environment. So all these different environment variables that we specified uh, within GitHub and within our uh, different, or I should say our parameters, uh, we, we've got all this ready to go. And so it'll change the subscription context if necessary, it'll validate the template and then it'll start creating your deployment. So this will take, depending on, on how many uh, instances you have, uh, this will take a few minutes because what we're actually doing is we're creating a brand new AKS cluster, which is getting some underlying virtual machines. And uh, to those uh, virtual machines, uh, we're applying uh, a Kubernetes install. From there, we're going to be actually then uh, deploying our application to that Kubernetes install. Now, I'm lucky enough that I've already got one of these finished. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. So here's the action and you can see I've built a new one here and the build and deploy completed. And if we go to the build and deploy, you'll see uh, we finished our entire process. It, it went ahead and it uh, deployed our front end and our back end. And then it applied uh, a public IP address. So you can see we get a cluster IP for internal IP addressing. And then uh, we've got a load balancer so we can actually applicate, uh, access our application from the front end, from the web. And uh, in order to be able to get that IP address, uh, we can just log into uh, AKS uh, using AZ CLI and just grab our, our credentials. So uh, let's go back to the actual code here. We'll scroll down and you can see I've given you a command to access your public IP from the load balancer. So what we're going to do is use the Azure CLI and we're going to go over into this section right here and we're just going to specify the name of our uh, resource group and that is in this case AKS Bicep 01. And uh, actually, that's the, the, the name of our cluster. Sorry. And then the resource group is the same. So we're specifying we need to get the credentials for the AKS Bicep 01 cluster from the AKS Bicep 01 resource group. And so what it'll do is it'll go, it'll access what am I, let's see. Oh, I see. I just... It should be G resource group instead of name. Anyway, uh, of course, let's see what uh, I did wrong here. Unrecognized command, AKS, AZ credentials. Great. Um, let's see. Let's try this once more. Sorry about that. Do it. You do it live, right? Okay. So we'll set our resource group. Bicep01, cluster name. And so now it'll go and it merged our AKS Bicep Kubernetes credentials into this kube dot, con, uh, this dot kube config file. And now what we can do is we can get the services. So here's an example of the output of what it will look like. Uh, what I need to do is get this load balancer IP. So I'm just going to loop cuddle, get services, all namespaces. It's going to go into Kubernetes and it's going to ask, uh, what are the IP for all these different services? And you can see right here, here's the front end load balancer and the external IP address. So I'm just going to grab that, put it into a browser. And now we've got our application. It's up and it's online. 
uh, dogs, dogs, dogs all day, right? Cool. Uh, that's how everything is built. I know it was really fast. Uh, I really recommend that you take a look at some of the resources to get even more information than what we presented before. So uh, here are some great places for you to get some resources. Uh, there's a quick start, uh, deploy bicep files by using GitHub Actions. It's gonna give you a similar version of what we did today. Um, it helps you just deploy a storage file. Um, if you go to this next link, you can get information on how to get started using Azure Kubernetes service, all the different product information. Um, if you want documentation about Azure Key Vault security, uh, aka at IMS slash security features three underscore 12 one. Uh, what is GitHub Actions for Azure? And then what is Bicep? So just some basic documentation that we've got set up. Um, this Bicep Learn module, it's free education. It's free training. Okay. So you can use uh, this to start learning more and more about Bicep if you go to aka.ms slash Bicep Learn. And, and that's everything. Um, and so uh, to, to answer Rhea's questions, we're covering all things DevOps on Azure. Um, while we also talking about the specific Azure DevOps products sometimes on this, uh, we also really love to talk about uh, all the different ways to use DevOps methodologies in order to create a great experience using Azure. Uh, so there's so many different tools. There's GitHub, uh, which is is just such a great way of integrating uh, your code into Azure using the workflows. Makes sense to me. You can use pipelines if you want. You can do this deployment using pipelines if you want, but that's a different session, okay? So uh, I, I think we're just about out of time. Uh, I really wanna say thank you. I super appreciate you all. Uh, one, dealing with my little mistakes, because, you know, these things happen. Uh, and uh, also just thank you for being here, being a part, watching, uh, talking in the chat. I really love having interaction with people. And uh, there was a bunch of you that took part, take a look, uh, did what we had to do today to make our application start running. So um, vote dogs, you can vote cats, you can vote whatever you want, but just go ahead and give this a try so you can vote. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jay. This was fantastic. We did get a couple other questions. I know I was dropping a bunch of links and commentary myself into the chat, so it kind of pushed things around. Um, so if you want to take a few seconds to scroll through that, if you have a few more minutes, um, I'm just going to quickly run through my two slides. And then if you want it, if there's anything you miss and you want to answer, feel free. Um, but sure. yeah, so. <laughs> um, uh, the the uh, arm. TTK, uh, so there's this question, Bicep is looking more and more powerful each day, but ARM template toolkit is already compatible. Uh, yes, it is already compatible. Um, there is a ARM template toolkit and the extension now uh, supports Bicep. Uh, you can go ahead. I think you need to, um, the, it, the Bicep extension, uh, supports files so that there are uh, a bunch of different things that you can use. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the ARM template toolkit now includes uh, Bicep, I think specifically for Azure DevOps. But uh, it, it's in there. Um, you can go to Azure slash ARM dash TTK on GitHub Actions. Or I just saw on GitHub. Um, we answered what a Bicep oh. file is. Um, I think there was a question related. One of the streams we're on right now is for the Desop, DevOps channel. Sure. Yeah. I, I just answered that before okay, and said, <laughs> you know, Microsoft, DevOps on Microsoft, you know, period. We want to just make sure that we're covering all of our bases. And while Azure DevOps is a great product, uh, GitHub and GitHub Actions is, is just as uh viable a product to talk about. And so this channel, it seems appropriate because we want to talk about DevOps on Azure, not just Azure DevOps. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Uh, no yeah. So for our audience still tuning in, I dropped a link to our survey. We use that information basically to 
put together future programming. Let us know based on your experience and your background, kind of the things you want us to be putting out free content wise. Give us some feedback there. And then also if you're tuning in from one of the many channels that we are streaming to right now and you're not familiar, this session is brought to you by the Microsoft Reactor program, uh, free community events for everyone. We are an international program. We have 12 physical spaces. Um, if you're not familiar with us, definitely check us out. Go to microsoftreactor.com. We have a calendar of events. Find their sessions around the world. So depending on where you're tuning in from, the time zone you're in, there might be sessions that are better for you. Uh, also find us on Twitter. You can check us out. We'll have this session on demand on our Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel and also if interested, you can go to aka.ms slash reactor email sign up. We don't spam you. We just send one email a month to let you know what we have coming up in your local region. Can I give them my Twitter account once sure. more? If yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, you can just go to twitter.com slash at jdestro or jdestro. Um, and, and if you'd like to also check out Azure Fun Bites. Uh, it's a weekly show where we cover all these different subjects about Azure. This week, we're going to be talking about WebAssembly. Uh, I'm going to be, I always have a guest. These guests are incredible. We always learn so much together. So uh, check that out if you'd like to. Uh, thank you so much, Rebecca. You are a wonderful, wonderful host. And I really do appreciate your time as well. Thanks, Jay. And I appreciate you coming on here and providing us your time as well. And to our audience for participating. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.